Hey, hey, welcome back to Berkeley Farm. Uh, we are in the tunnel. I thought I just stepped on a cucumber, but I didn't. Uh, we are in the tunnel, obviously. Um, I think we got a little bit of rain last night. There's some, some rain on the top of the tunnel, so that makes me even more thankful for this tunnel uh, that I was able to protect these guys from apparently a little rain shower we got last night. But check out how things are looking in here. They're growing like crazy. Um, some of these tomatoes over here, y'all, are almost, well, they're roughly like halfway up to the trellising the conduit up here. But anyways, that's not why I brought you out here today. I brought you out here because I am trellising cucumbers today and I thought I would show you the setup. So I did a, a video on my tomato uh, trellising setup, what I did out in my outdoor garden and then what I did over here. Um, so I'm actually gonna be doing the same trellising system for the cucumbers here as I'm doing for the tomatoes in here. Um, and so I thought I would just do an in-depth video on how I'm actually setting that up. I'm hoping that's gonna be helpful for somebody out there that's watching this. Uh, but yeah, these are my cucumbers. I transplanted these out maybe three or four days ago now. They're looking good. Um, some of them were maybe a little smaller. Let me show you this small guy over here. Some of them were a little smaller than I had wanted them to be before I transplanted them out. Uh, but I went ahead and just took the risk and did it. And so far, they're doing just fine. They're getting watered every day. Every morning at about 6 a.m., the, the drip irrigation kicks on. They get watered for 45 minutes, and they're looking good. Some of them are already really starting to grow, like this guy here has really started to take off. And so that's why I'm wanting to get my trellis set up today. Because technically, these guys don't need to be trellised just yet. But you know, if you've ever grown cucumbers... When they get going, they really get going and they'll take off. And before I know it, they will need to be trellised. And I don't want to be in a situation where I don't have my trellis up and ready to go. So we're going to get that taken care of today. And I'm going to walk you through the process. So in this row of cucumbers, just for reference, all of these guys were started um, by seed inside my greenhouse. And then I transplanted them out, which is kind of a new practice for me. I've only ever direct sown cucumbers and you'll hear a lot of times you'll hear people say that you can't you you shouldn't transplant out cucumbers uh, just because they don't like their root system disturbed a whole lot and they won't do well however that has not been the case for me so far they've done just fine um, I was pretty careful or as careful as I could be during the transplanting process getting them out here in the tunnel um, to try not to disturb their roots a whole lot but I mean they've done fine they've, they've handled it like little champs um, so what I've got out here is, well, the original plan was to do half a row of pickling cucumbers and half a row of slicing cucumbers. However, for whatever reason, my pickling cucumbers did not germinate well. I, I don't know what it was, but they just did not germinate great. So it's about a third of the row is a pickling cucumber and then two thirds is a slicing cucumber, which is fine. That's probably honestly for the best. Um, I don't know how many people are going to want a pickling cucumber, so... If they do well, then I'll just know to plant more next year. If they don't do great, then I only got a third of a row of them, so it's good. The pickling cucumber is called Excelsior. Um, I chose that one just because it came recommended to me. I have a friend who, who has grown it in the past, and he said that it did well for him here in this growing zone. So that's why I went with Excelsior. Uh, the slicing cucumber is called Piccolino. I went with it because it had good reviews on Johnny Seeds and, and that's what I went with. So Excelsior and Piccolino, uh, they're looking great so far. I have planted these guys roughly 12 inches apart and I did that because that's what the seed packet said to do. Uh, these, both of these cucumbers are specifically designed to grow in a high tunnel environment. So that's another reason I chose to go with these um, because I expect them to do a little better under cover. So we'll see how that goes. Um, another thing that's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for me this year is I will be pruning these cucumbers. I have never pruned a cucumber in my life. I don't even know how. I'm going to have to watch some YouTube videos on that and check that out. Um, but these guys will be pruned. They'll have to be pruned because they will be trellised up one single string, just like my tomatoes are behind me. Um, let me turn you around. I guess they were in front of me. So these guys have to be, these tomatoes have to be hard pruned because they're only going up a single string. Each tomato gets one string. Uh, that's not a huge deal for me because I've always been accustomed to hard pruning my tomatoes. However, cucumbers, I generally let just go wild. I, I'll let them grow up a cattle panel and I just let them do their thing. Um, so I'm going to have to hone in on my pruning skills here. 
uh, and get those guys pruned good so they can go up the, the one string. So let me, let me show you what I'm gonna be using supplies wise for the trellising system. Okay, so everything you'll need um, for your trellising system, you're gonna see right here. So what we've got is three quarter inch electrical conduit. I'll show you, it's just a hollow metal tube. Um, I've had questions about, you know, why not use PVC pipe? It would be cheaper. However, um, yeah, it probably would be quite a bit cheaper, but you have to have something that's gonna be good and sturdy, that's gonna hold the weight of the plant. It's not gonna bow and bend and all that as the plant grows and it gets a lot of fruit on it. Uh, that gets really heavy, so you have to have something that's sturdy enough to hold its structure, if that makes sense. So this is a 10 foot section of three quarter inch electrical conduit. These guys ran me roughly $10 a stick. I'm doing a 40 foot um, section. So roughly this is 40 foot or $40 worth of electrical conduit. And then, you know, plus tax, a little more than 40 bucks. So it is pretty expensive, but something to keep in mind is that it's more like an investment because it's something that's gonna last. Uh, I'm not gonna be replacing this year after year. I'll, I'll be reusing it year after year. So hopefully it's just a one-time uh, purchase, okay? Um, so yeah, I did a 40 foot section for each row of tomatoes over here and then I'll have a 40 foot section for my cucumbers over here. So roughly, you know, just a, a little over 120 bucks for all of that for the trellising system. So it, it is expensive, but um, it's more of an investment versus, you know, purchase, purchasing it year after year. So 40, uh, four 10 foot sections of three quarter inch electrical conduit. I got these from, I think, Home Depot. Um, you'll want the little coupling or the connectors. We bought just this whole uh, little bucket of them just because uh, we knew that we would potentially be putting up more high tunnels and we would need multiple ones of these. So um, we just went ahead and bought a whole bucket of them. And these were pretty cheap. I don't remember off the top of my head how much they were, but they, they really weren't that expensive. So just the coupling piece that you know each end of the conduit will go into you'll tighten down the screws and it'll it'll hold it together so it's going to make you one 40 foot section uh, and make sure you get the right size obviously the three quarter inch for your three quarter inch pipe or whatever size pipe you decide to go with um so that will uh, connect your pipes you're going to need some form of string to come off of your pipe uh, of course you've heard me talk about this before i got this jute string from johnny seeds use any string really. Uh, I chose this because it is biodegradable. I'm trying to make a little more conscious effort to be, um, you know, just a little more eco-friendly. So this will, uh, once, once I'm done with it at the end of the year, I can just cut it down, throw it in the compost pile, <laughs> which I don't even have yet. I don't have a compost pile, but that's, that's on my list of things to do. So anyways, biodegradable jute, uh, you can get any sort of string you want. And then you'll obviously need some way to connect the actual plant to the string. Now, you know, cucumbers do have the little tendrils, uh, so it can connect itself. Um, and that may be what I end up doing. I, honestly, if I'm, if I'm being honest, I really don't know. So I've got these. These are what I'm using for my tomato plants. Um, and these are just the little plastic clips. And these actually aren't plastic. These are also biodegradable, which is pretty stinking cool in my opinion these also came from johnny seeds um but if if my cucumber plant doesn't connect to my string like i want it to with its little tendrils i can just clip it with these guys so this is a box of 500 it's what i've been using for my tomato plants like i said uh something to note with these it, it'll tell you in the package when you get them in the mail don't leave them outdoors in the hot sun or or in your tunnel or your greenhouse because these guys will melt together. I, I wasted a whole bunch of them uh, unintentionally because I accidentally left them out here and they sure enough did just melt in a big nasty clump together. Uh, but so far, you know, when they're connected onto the string and they're separated, they're, they're not melting, so they're doing just fine. Um, so you want that string, clips, conduit, coupling, um, and then something I don't have out here because I accidentally left it at the house is you're gonna want uh, like a zip tie or something. We've got these guys, these um, tomato trellises, we've got them zip tied to the actual tunnel. So 
when you put your conduit on your trusses, it's not rolling side to side and potentially, you know, ripping your plants out of the ground. You want to make sure it's connected to the trusses. Um, and so we just placed three or four zip ties down to keep it in place. And so I'll have to run back to the house and grab that. Okay, it is hot. It's not hot, it's humid. I'm like, I'm already sweating. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started connecting these conduits together with the coupling, little coupling pieces. Put it up top, show you what that looks like, and then I will show you how I'm gonna get the string over because that's a, a technique all in, in and of itself. Okay, we're done. Super easy, took me, I don't know, five minutes to do. Uh, maybe 30 seconds if you're watching on <laughs> time lapse, but roughly, real time, took me about five minutes. Really easy, just three, it just takes three connector pieces uh, to get all four pieces together. Um, now, what I need to do is go grab those zip ties because it's important to have your trellis or your conduit right above your row of plants you know whatever that may be because the string is going to come straight down uh, eventually as the plant grows the weight of the plant is going to what going to be what pulls that string straight down so if you have your you know your if your trellis is all wonky and it's over to a side or whatever obviously the you know the plant's going to grow up to wherever the conduit is so i need to go grab those zip ties i'm going to zip tie it in place and then we'll get the string on okay zip ties are in uh, I've got my conduit roughly right above my row of cucumbers. I put in three zip ties total, so one at the end, one in the middle, and then one at the beginning. And that should keep it in place. And then as the weight of the plant uh, gets larger, it'll um, take those strings straight down and it'll, it'll hold the conduit in place even further. So we should be good to go. Now what we have to do is bring in the jute or the string, whatever you choose to use, and take it right above the conduit i'll show you how to do it and then hang it right down um probably for now i'll just let them hang and they'll be there to use when it's time to trellis the cucumbers as they grow a little bit bigger um but eventually they're going to be connected to the plant i'm gonna have to have a piece of string for every single plant so i've roughly got 40 cucumbers in this row so i'll need 40 strings hanging down it, it is a little time consuming but it's a one-time thing and i've got a tick on me hold tight I hate ticks. I hate ticks so much. I wish they did not exist. They serve no purpose in life. Nasty little thing. Okay, so here's what we've got. I recommend not buying crazy fancy equipment and just use what you got. So this is why I'm using trauma shears and my child's backpack. So let me turn you around, show you how we're gonna do this. Okay, so I'm taking a backpack. I've got my string, my jute, sticking it in the backpack. I'm gonna wear this sucker so I just have easy access to my string and I'm not constantly up and down, picking it up, putting it down. Uh, I can get it zipped a little bit. Okay, so there I've got my scissors. Um, and then because this string is really lightweight, uh, you're gonna want something with a little weight on the end of it to help uh, draw or throw the string over the conduit. So I don't even know what this is. I just found it in the garage <laughs> and it's gonna work. It's just a, a little weight for me so I can get it over the conduit. I'm gonna show you the first one and then I'll try to find a place to set you up and show you actually how I did it. So first string is looped through up there and it's just hanging all the way down to my first plant. I'm gonna go down and do one for every single plant Every plant gets their own string, and I'm gonna show you how I did it. Okay, I don't have the best setup here, so I'm gonna try to show you best I can. So all I'm doing, I got my string in my backpack back here, um, so it's nice and handy. I'm just gonna tie a loop, nothing fancy, because I don't know how to do real fancy things. Um, tie a loop, 
at the end, take your weight, whatever that may be. Like a, a carabiner would probably be best, honestly. Um, this actually isn't that great. So you do kind of have to finagle it a little bit. Um, but just a little bit of weight to keep it secure. Pull out some slack here. You gotta have a little bit of accuracy to be able to get this thing over the conduit. Uh, I'm not claiming to have much of that, so sometimes it takes me a couple of tries. Uh, and then throw it over. Oh dang, this is not embarrassing at all. I promise I'm better than this. Bring it down. You want to bring it down roughly to the end of the plant so you know how long your string needs to be and then ideally you would have your scissors already in hand or whatever you're using to cut your string. Cut it. Take your weight off and then thread it through that loop you made at the beginning and then you want to make sure before you like really tighten it, try to get it you know, eyeball it roughly right above your plant there, okay? Um, it does take a little bit of time. It's not too bad. Once you get kind of in the momentum and the groove of it, it's not too bad. So I'm going to run down, get all these done, and then I'll get back with you. Okay, it is done. Um, one string per plant, roughly right above. I just eyeballed it right above every plant. Um, these guys, again, will be hard pruned. So they will trout this right up each string um, whether that's with you know their little tendrils or I use a clip to get them on there we're just gonna kind of play it by ear and see how that goes but pretty easy um, took me I don't know roughly 30 minutes to get it done I will say once you get going you do kind of get in a groove and it goes by a little quicker you can kind of get a momentum going there so pretty easy little setup the main cost was the electrical conduit at the top um, I, I don't remember how much the jute cost you could you could look on Johnny seeds um, the jute and the clips came from there uh, they weren't just super expensive uh, I did want to say that so far using this trellising system on my tomatoes over here this has been my favorite form of trellising I've used um, so I feel like it's probably going to be my favorite form over here on the cucumbers. I have seen people use that horticult horticultural netting. They'll, they'll hang it from the top of their tunnels and take it down and then let the um, cucumbers grow up it. You could probably let them go a little wilder uh, and not prune quite as hard as what I'm going to have to prune here. Uh, I don't know. I've not ever used that. I've just seen it used. Um, but saying that, saying that I really have enjoyed using this trellising system. I think it is the most user friendly. Um, I think that it is the most cost effective, honestly, even though the the electrical conduit is pretty expensive. It's a one-time purchase. You use it year after year. Um, I'm probably going to take this system to my outdoor garden in the future. Not this year because I've already got my, my setup going, but you can use this in an outdoor setting. You just need T-post and um, uh, like PVC they're the little T connectors uh, you can look that method up Jill at Whispering Willow just did a how-to on that this is using this system in an outdoor setting and how to set that up um, and then I've seen I've also seen Josh Satin uh, I really enjoy his videos he has a how-to video on how to set that up in an outdoor garden so I would totally check that out if you're looking to use this system and you don't have a tunnel to trellis like this um, you want to take it to an outdoor setting definitely check those videos out because it is doable um, so yeah uh, I'm excited this took me I don't know maybe an hour or so to get all set up and that was with a couple of interruptions um, so yeah I'll let you know how it goes from here on out I'll catch y'all next time bye